I've got a small electronics project that I need to do. And what it is, is a power supply for my shop camera. And basically it's just a regulator that drops the 18 volts from the cordless tool batteries that I have mounted up on my gantry down to around eight volts for my camera. And if you're interested in the details on that in particular, there's a link in the description to the website article that goes along with this that has a more detailed description. But in this video, I wanna make the box that'll hold the components. And because the regulator that I'm using needs a heat sink, I'm gonna make parts of the outside of the box from aluminum for that. To get started, I'm gonna cut out the wooden parts and I have a piece of maple here. And the first cut that I'm gonna make is to get a strip that's 1 8 of an inch thick. And then I'll move the fence and make a cut to get a piece that's 3 8 of an inch thick. And these will be the sides and the end of the box. The box that I'm making is going to be two inches wide by four inches long. But of course, this can be made in any size in the same way. You just need to upsize the parts. What I've done here is I've laid out on the thicker piece that I cut, the 3 8 inch one, spaces that I want to cut out so I'll have a little bit more room inside the box. And of course, this can be left full thickness all the way through, but I thought I would show this as an option. Sometimes you need to put a switch or something in the end and the material can't be this thick. To glue these parts together, I'm using fast setting epoxy, and I could use regular wood glue for this, but I want to finish this project today and the epoxy sets up a lot quicker. And while I'm waiting for the epoxy to set up, I can get started cutting out the aluminum for the top and the bottom. And this is scrap that I've had for quite a few years and it's kind of beat up a little bit. So to improve the way it looks, I'm gonna use my palm sander on the faces that'll show. I'm not concerned about the inside. And what this gives me is a kind of a matte frosted look that I really like and it's easy to do. All right, epoxy's hard enough on the wooden parts for me to sand the top and the bottom. That's all I'm gonna do for now. I wanna make a flat. And I'm going to use that to mark out the covers on the aluminum. And I'm going to make this just a little bit oversized and cut it out with a hacksaw. Okay, that was fun and a bit of a workout. But next up, we need to do a little bit more epoxy action, and I'm gonna glue the wooden frame onto what will be the bottom cover. I let the epoxy dry on the bottom for about a half an hour. And before I go any further, I wanna get rid of the excess that's sticking out. So I clamped it in my vise and I was going gung-ho with the file when ironically my battery went dead and cut off the action. And that's one way to do it, the hard way. But luckily I have some technology here and I'm gonna bring it over to my belt disc sander and finish it off. The top cover gets the same treatment. I scratched very accurate layout lines in it using the box as a pattern. And I'm gonna bring it right down to those lines. With the top cover resized, I need to drill holes in here for the screws that'll attach it to the wooden frame. I'm gonna lay those out with the calipers and then bring it over to my drill press and drill them out. And with that done, I can put the lid on the box and clamp it in place with a spring clamp and drill through into the wooden frame for the screws. With the holes in the wooden frame drilled, I can enlarge the holes in the cover so that the screws will fit through it. The screws I'm using for this are the smallest I have, number four, and they're half inch long. And of course, they really don't need to be any bigger than that for a project box this size. And speaking of screws, I can get them put in and bring it back over to the disc sander for more shaping. In particular, I want to round over the corners a bit 
And then when that's done, I can do the final sanding and I'm gonna do all that by hand. I thought about going overboard and bringing this aluminum up to a full mirror-like polish, but I couldn't justify the time it would take for a utilitarian project like this. So instead I settled for bringing it up to 220 grit on the edges. And then I redid the face in the back on the random orbit sander, except this time I've got a finer disc. By now you might be a little bit confused because the box at the beginning of the video was blue. And true enough, when I did get it coated with the water-based poly, I wasn't happy with the way it looked, especially to get an attractive looking thumbnail so this video can actually get a few views. So what I did was I masked out the wood and I painted the top and bottom cover blue. And I think it looks pretty good. Another option would have been to leave the aluminum plain but go with the darker wood. And that would have gave me the contrast that I was looking for. But at the end of the day, it still works exactly the same way, no matter what it looks like. 